Good afternoon, all of the LDZers out there in LDZ land. Uh, before too long, you'll be hopping on planes and traveling to different parts of the nation, including California, Nueva York, Chicago, Colorado, Texas. Some of you will be going to Panama. And I personally, as president and founder of this organization, I wanted to first take the time to thank you for trusting us. I want to thank your parents for trusting us. And then I also want to wish you well as you look forward to hopefully what will be one of the most amazing experiences of your life. Just so you'll know, the LDZ is the second in a series of leadership experiences that take place every summer throughout the country. It follows the great debate uh, that's specifically for ninth graders, and it generally represents young men and women who are in their sophomore year of high school as of this coming September, or just finish it, I'd say, their sophomore year of high school, or are going to be emerging seniors. The LDZ goes all the way back to 1981 in Austin when we first pilot tested this approach to youth development at the Texas legislature. In case you're interested in the history of it, we were the first Latino group in the state of Texas to ever occupy uh, the chambers in both the Senate and the House, including the Supreme Court. And to this day, anyone who goes to the Texas program sits in the actual seats of the legislature, be it the Senate or the House, and they conduct all of their proceedings in the Capitol facilities. It's really a, a great experience, but it's no better than Colorado and uh, California is just as good. New York National is very competitive. Every program, Panama, every program seems to have its own character, its own, its own unique makeup, and its own unique leadership that emerges as a result of the experience in which you navigate tomorrow's world. While I'm at it, let me kind of give you my summary of why an LDZ and what's important. We call it navigating, navigating systems. It's very important for all of us to know as young people that learning how to navigate social systems is very key to your future. The more you know about organized processes and protocols and organizational culture, the more you know about how to envision the future, the better prepared you are to go through these processes and through these protocols, the, the greater success you're going to have in not only your individual efforts, not only your professional development, but as far as we're concerned, in your, in your capacities to become tomorrow's leaders. Lorenzo de Zavala was established for that reason. And for history buffs again, who was Lorenzo de Zavala? Certainly not me. This was the provisional, the first provisional vice president of the Republic of Texas in 1836. Uh, he, along with Sam Houston, were the first president and vice president of the Republic of, of Texas back then. I happened to one day uh, be a, around the San Jacinto Monument where his grave is located and saw that it was underwater. I was 22 years old at the time and was disturbed with the fact that a, 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 a monument or a burial of that historical significance would be unattended to by our public community. So I, I went before then Governor John Connolly and took a petition with me and uh, had a state representative by the name of Lauro Cruz from Houston. And we introduced it to the House and then later to the Senate. And they adopted that. They, they took the graves where they were located in this hidden part of the forest and, move it, and moved it to where it's located today uh, on this actual San Jacinto battleground uh, area. And so every time I go by there, I kind of and, and look at the descendants that came from his marriage, his second marriage, and I look at the listing of people that are on tombstones, I, I feel like I had a little bit part in, in history, and I'm very grateful for that opportunity. Let me turn, in terms of my final message, to something that you may want to think about, and it's called framing the future. When you come to the LDZ, you're not only going to be expected to confront the issues of protocol and procedure and organizing your political parties and stating your preferences in terms of public policy. 
you're going to be challenged by even something bigger and greater. And that is envisioning tomorrow, let's say 30 years into the future. Most of you who are going to be in these sessions are about 15 or 16, perhaps even 17 years of age. The purpose of LDZ is to help you envision when you're in your late 40s, when you are in a position of power and of influence, when you reach that point in life where we expect you to be part of the voice of tomorrow, part of the policy decision mechanisms of society. As Latinos, there is no doubt that we've earned that place in the sun. We are a permanent part of the American experience. We also want that exposure to have its, its carryover into Latin America. Whether you live in Panama, in the La República Dominicana, in Mexico, Puerto Rico, it doesn't matter. As you get older, you are expected not only to be a person of a professional caliber and class, but more importantly, the kind of people who are going to form the future policy of your distinctive, distinctive nations and parts of the world. That means that you have to think futuristically. That means you have to have an idea for how you wish to see the Latino community of the future evolve. Example, should we develop a hemispheric identity of ourselves or should we, be con or we continue being separated by geography, by customs, by ideologies, by political beliefs? Uh, should, should we see ourselves as, 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 as in a global context or should we see ourselves as individual nation states? Those determinations are going to come from you. And as we progress forward into the history of tomorrow, you need to kind of learn to lay the groundwork for how not only you wish to live your lives, but live and the lives of your own children who are yet to even be thought of. So the whole purpose of NHI, and in particular in this case, the LDZ, is to see tomorrow and perceive tomorrow as you would like to shape it not having shape, it shaped for you, but for you to have a direct role and a direct influence and determining what world you want to operate in and the why and what's the value, what are the benefits that come from that. So I expect you to come across with amazing ideas of how you see the world of tomorrow. And I'm talking about within the context of Latino community life. We're all too, particularly, uh, we're all too familiar with many of the conditions uh, that surround us today. Oftentimes, uh, we're not perceived as a very progressive looking community. Oftentimes, we're referred to, particularly in the United States, as minorities. Oftentimes, we're perceived as people in need. If you were to alter that imagery, if you were to somehow develop a different imagery of Latinos that, that promotes excellence, that promotes expertise, that promotes the concepts of leadership and ownership and being a stakeholder in the American experience, whether it's here in the United States or in other Latin American countries, what would you propose as policy that we hold up and standards and guidelines that are going to get us there? That's not something easy for you to think about because in general, most of us are not taught to think in those terms or not taught to perceive the world in those terms. Oftentimes, regrettably, we're taught to see things from a deficit point of view for what we can't do, what our problems are, what our issues are, instead of seeing ourselves from the standpoint of what are our opportunities, what are our challenges, what are things we can accomplish in our lifetime. The very essence of the National Hispanic Institute is driven by that philosophy of opportunity and envisioning tomorrow from the standpoint of having an asset rather than a deficit. It was very easy for me back in those days, 36 years ago, to concentrate only on the dropout, only on the child with a lot of problems, only on the child that was hungry. Those are worthwhile human issues, no doubt about it. Instead, I said, I want to concentrate on that two or three percent, that caliber of young child that's going to take us to the next level, that's going to be our voice of the future and has the capacities to think in complex thought, complex manners, and is able to envision a world of tomorrow that because of who they are, they're able to achieve. 
I hope you have fun in this experience because it's designed to be fun. I hope you are, are constantly involved with your education directors and a, and a lot of exchange of ideas. I hope you rely on your senior counselors to uh, help you articulate your ideas. And I hope you utilize this opportunity to make many new friends. After all, the very students that go to LDZ will be your college roommates, eventually your business partners, eventually the people that hold public office and run societies of the future. Good luck to you, LDZ class of 2015. And I look forward at times permitting, uh, my schedule permitting, to be there, if only for a few moments, to share in the experience of being there with you. Thank you and good luck. Thank you.